every team has their alumni, their former hockey greats, every team also has its current greats. But in the end, who really will leave the largest impact on their franchise? We composed an all-time slash all-star team for the Ottawa Senators. Some players will be exempt though. For example, Wayne Gretzky is the greatest player of all time, right? But he wouldn't be on the St. Louis Blues team due to him only being there a very short period of time and not contributing anything major to the club. I'd like to start by getting right into this, beginning with the forwards we chose. Let's dive right into the top line. And this top line was an actual line unlike most of the others in this. This was a line used in the early 2000s which saw a lot of success. This line was known as the pizza line. Danny Heatley, Jason Spezza, and Danielle Alfredson. Alfredson is the face of the franchise, the greatest captain, the leader in goals, points, and assists, and also played nearly 20 seasons there. With that being said, he is also the captain we chose for this team. His fellow winger, of course, would be Danny Heatley, the best pure scorer the franchise has ever had. His back-to-back 50-goal -back seasons in 2005, 2006, and 2006, 2007 remain the only time a senator has scored 50. Taking the center between these two would be Jason Spezza, the playmaker. Having a center as talented and strong as Spezza was is what makes a first line a first line. That brings us to the second line, Mark Stone, Alexi Yashin, and Mike Hoffman. Before there was Alfredson, there was Yashin. His hands were elite, but his attitude is what hurt him. But he was just too damn talented. A lot of people forget how he kept this team afloat for quite some time. Stone may be one of the best two-way players to ever play for the Senators, another top-notch goal scorer. And what made his play so unique is how defensive he was as well. Hoffman is there to score goals. And that's exactly what he did, adored by fans and teammates, until his wife basically tore apart the entire team and created a dumpster fire that we still see today. But that's a story for another time. Our third line gets a little more creative. Marion Hossa, JG Pajot, and Martin Havlat. Hossa wasn't a senator for the longest time, but when he was, he was a forward powerhouse. 2002-03 season, Hossa set the franchise record for goals. His 45 was the record until it was surpassed by Heatley in 2006. Hossa was brought in with fewer expectations, so this made Marion Mania a short-lived era, but still a memorable one. JG Pajot was Ottawa's latest traded away player, but boy was he a good one. Pajot is a skilled and very overlooked player, more of a sleeper if you will face-off wizard and has just recently turned into a notably talented goal scorer as he was traded to the New York Islanders for way more than you would think. Originally a third line or fourth line center flipped from multiple picks including a first. Yeah, Havlat, a physical player we all forgot about, being honest. Another two-way dynamo that is perfect for any third line. Our fourth line though is a unique one at best. Actually had a couple of names that really did hurt to leave off, but it consists of Chris Neal, Mike Fisher, and Sean McCachron. Chris Neal is the franchise's leader in penalty minutes, and third in games played. Pretty notable, he's a fourth line god. Mike Fisher was more defensive, I would say, than offensive, which is why I have him on the bottom line. His career had a 50.7 faceoff percentage as a senator. McCachron is a forgotten name if you aren't a Senators fan, and to be honest, I myself forgot about him. But it's a joke because he was the man in Ottawa. He's a fourth liner that also had some skill, something you don't see a lot of on the fourth line, and he is widely overlooked. Defensive time. First pairing, Eric Carlson, Wade Redden. You think Ottawa, you think EK65. EK was the best D-man this organization ever had. Skilled with the puck, loved by fans, two-time Norris Trophy winner, and so on. Trading EK was the day the team's heart stopped beating. Redden, like EK, was also an offensive defenseman. For many years, he held that blue line down. The impact he had for the Sens was eternal. The second pairing is another stacked couple of boys, Sudano Chara and Chris Phillips. Big Z is a lot of things, scary being one of them. Giant, physical, very defensive, and one of the hardest shots of all time cements him as a Senators alumni. Chris Phillips was not the most offensive D-man to play the game. He was a defensive focused kind of guy and a great leader at that, which is why he's earned this spot. Third pairing gives us Jason York and Thomas Shabbat. Jason York is insanely underrated. He established career highs in goals, assists, and points while with this team. He plays his own style while contributing on both ends. Thomas Shabbat is still young, but has proven to be here for the long haul. Kid's a superstar. 
He may be young, but has proven he can lead. Play a very offensive yet defensive game as well. Locker room presence, adored by fans, and already starting an incredible career. Time for the goalies. I love to put Hasek here, but he simply hasn't been here long enough. Therefore, I have starting the greatest goaltender in Ottawa Senators history, Craig Anderson. He has 200 career wins as a Senator alongside a .914 save percentage, iconic moments, and playoff wins he's established as the GOAT in Ottawa. Backing him up, of course, is the second in all time for wins for the Senators, Patrick Lalime. His departure was a rough one, but his time there was remarkable and unforgettable. This brings us to this. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more just like it, please comment and subscribe. Thank you. We'll see you next time.